Alright, the client is done, now we'll start on the server. So we'll make a new source file and we'll just call this server and tick the box for main. There we go. And we'll wrap everything we have or we're doing inside a try catch block. Uh, just like the client, we'll just say if there's any errors to just print out a message saying something went wrong and be done with it. There we go. Just like that. Alright, so now we'll need to uh, make a way for the client to connect to the server. So we'll start by just saying, alright, I want to host the server on port 8005. So we'll say server socket, serve socket equals new server socket 8005. So this line just says, I want to host the server on port 8005. And obviously this number here needs to be the same as this number here in the client application because that's the port we're going to use. Uh, so once that's done, we have to actually wait for the client to connect. So we'll say wait for client to connect. Here, I'll just import server socket. Here, uh, we can type in socket client equals serve socket dot accept. So the accept method will wait until a client connects. And once it connects, it will return a socket object representing the client. And what I'm saying here is that this line here is linked to this line here. So once this line on the client side runs, this line will actually return. And it will return a socket and we'll just call that socket client. Similar to the client application, we have a socket for the server, just like this. In the server application, we need a socket for the client. We also need to set up our input and output streams. So we'll say set up streams and do the same thing. I'll just copy and paste the code from the client. Copy this and paste it in here. We'll call this client out and client in and we'll change these to client. There we go. Alright, now we'll need to wait for the client to send us a message. Uh, so we can do this inside a infinite while loop because we want the client to keep sending information. So in our example we can say apples, apples, we can say pair, we can say phone, we can say battery. It'll keep, it'll keep waiting for uh, the client to send messages. That's why it's in a while loop. So now we can just say uh, string client uh, data or client input equals client in dot read object. Remember the input stream is for reading data. So now we'll need to once again cast from object to a string and that's that. Now we'll need to actually uh, convert the inputted data from the lowercase version to the uppercase version. So we'll say string converted input equals the input, client input, dot to uppercase. And that's that. So now, if for example the client sends apples as the text, apples is stored in client input, and then we're saying converted input equals apples dot to uppercase. Now we need to actually send back that data. We can just say client out dot writes object converted input. So now we're sending back the converted input, which is now in uppercase, back to the client. And that's all. The application is done. We can now run it and see what happens. So we'll just uh, close off my example. And we'll start by running the server. Right click, run as Java application. That's running. Now we'll just right click on the client, run as Java application. We can just say, alright, send text, apples, uppercase, phone, keyboard and it works. There you go. So that's the basic overview of socket programming in Java. You can obviously expand on this and uh, instead of you know making the text uppercase maybe make it lowercase or you know do anything else you want to do with it. 